So I'm Dr. Michael Ryan. I work here at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History. I'm head of the vertebrate paleontology department. And today we're talking about some new leptoceratopsids. So the two new dinosaurs that we're talking about today are new to science. One of them was actually discovered about 10 years ago. Uh, was actually published on, but we didn't know what it was. We've since done more research and figured out that it's nothing like anything else, therefore we can give it a new name. The second dinosaur, which is um, an even older dinosaur in the geologic record, was actually found probably more than 50 years ago, and it's been in a museum collections until we started working on our new paper. And at that point, we brought all the relevant material together and laid it out on the table, and we realized this is like this, and oh, by the way, these broken pieces actually go together. And when we did that, we actually assembled enough of this little dinosaur that we can give it a name. Um, the two dinosaurs, although they're closely related to each other, did not, not actually live at the same time. UNESCO Ceratops was about 75 million years ago, and Griffoceratops was probably between 82 to 83 million years. They lived in the same, roughly same geographic area of southern Alberta, just north of the Montana border, but they're separated in time by seven to eight million years. So, um, the younger dinosaur is named UNESCO Ceratops, which is named after the UN agency known as UNESCO, whose uh, mandate is to, uh, part of its mandate is to educate the public about important ecological and natural history sites around the world. So we've named it in honor of uh, Dinosaur Provincial Park, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And the name Dinosaur Provincial Park, a Ceratops, was too long, so we decided to use UNESCO to, to honor both of those. The second um, geologically older dinosaur is known as Griffoceratops, which is taken from the mythical creature the griffin. And we've named it Griffoceratops because, like the griffin, this animal would have had a hooked beak at the front of its face. So the two new dinosaurs, Griffoceratops and UNESCO Ceratops, are both only known from a single bone each. And that single bone is the lower jaw, element known as a dentary, makes up your lower jaw with your teeth in it. Unfortunately, we don't have more of the skeletons. We've only got these elements. Fortunately for us, for these type of dinosaurs, you only need the lower jaw to get enough characters to be able to distinguish it from other types of dinosaurs. So the shape, size, and other features in terms of how the teeth fit into it are unique for these group of dinosaurs and can be, dis and can be used to distinguish them from one another. So collectively, they're known as leptoceratopsids. They belong to the family leptoceratopsidae. And these are a subset within the large horned dinosaurs that you'd be familiar with, like Triceratops and Stracosaurus. We think that the two dinosaurs are actually relatively small. In fact, we think they're some of the smallest known plant-eating dinosaurs. The UNESCO Ceratops, we estimate that its adult length with a tail would have only been about a meter long, maybe slightly longer than you can see my arms out there. The Griffoceratops, we think, was actually very tiny, less than a half a meter long, so probably about 18 inches. And we base that upon the, um, the size of the lower jaw, and from that we can estimate the length of the body by comparing those jaw elements to the jaws of other sized animals. Well, the older of the two dinosaurs, Griffoceratops, is interesting because from this time zone and this part of the world, we don't have a lot of dinosaurs that we can actually put names onto. We've got lots of isolated elements, teeth, partial bones, but um, not enough of the skeletons to actually interpret what they are. We now have one more named dinosaur from this area, which helps us to fill in what the evolutionary histories of other dinosaurs would have been. We know that Griffoceratops was very closely related to um, U uh, UNESCO Ceratops 75 million years ago, and it's very similar to an animal known as, known as Leptoceratops, which, occur which occurred about 65 million years ago, just prior to the extinction of the dinosaurs. So we've got a 20 million year history now in southern Alberta and other parts of the western interior of North America where these little dinosaurs are very similar to one another. The implications for Griffoceratops is that it's the oldest known Leptoceratopsid in the world. So we, um, we're not postulating that it actually originated in North America, but that the early evol evolutionary history probably brought this group or its ancestors over from Asia, where they diversified and evolved in North America and Leptoceratops and Griffoceratops and UNESCO Ceratops show a nice interesting progression of how these things would have been developing in this area.